Okay, let's pray together. Our gracious Father, thank you so much for gathering us today so that we can listen to your word and we can be led by your grace. And Lord, as your children, we want to grow more and we want to know your will more clearly. So this time through the Bible, please guide us and lead us so that we can always follow your footsteps in our life. And Lord, there are some trials and affliction in our life, but still we trust you because everything happens according to your will. So while we study the word of God, help us to understand that we are here in our position according to your will, so that we can always praise you. So I commit the rest of time until mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, let's open the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. Uh, it's Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. Let's read it together. The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the, of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. This is the beginning of the, their 40 year journey in the wilderness, and they were staying in Mount Horeb. Actually, Moses received the Ten Commandments from God there. One day, God said, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. This means, God was counting the days and weeks and months, so he knows that how, how long they dwelt there. So one day God spoke to them, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. And verse 7, turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites. In this scripture, what we can know is that God was leading the children of Israel in the wilderness. It was God who knew exactly how long they dwelt in one place and he was leading them to another place. So their journey in the wilderness is, was according to God's will. God really cared for them. And even now we know that God cares for us in our Christian life because he loves us. Actually, during the 40-year journey in the wilderness, it was God who was preparing everything. He was the one who went ahead of them and prepared the place they will stay. And he was the one who guided them all along. So let's uh, turn to verse 33. Verse 33. Verse 33. Let's read it together. Who went in the way before you? to search out a place for you, to pitch your tent, to show you the way you should go in the fire by night and in the cloud by day. Yes, God, here who means God? God went in the way before you, before you. God was always moving ahead of them to search out a place for you, to pitch your tent. They need a place to, to install their tent. And that's why God went ahead of them and found the place and God was leading them into that place. He was like a loving father who was taking his children all the time. One day, I got a call from one sister. She needed some counseling because uh, she was very depressed. The reason why she was depressed was because she, was, she invested some money uh, and bought some house, apartment. And then one of her friends said, why don't you sell it because the price doesn't go up. And he, she sold it. And after four months, she found that 
the price of that house went up so high, so she lost the opportunity to make a lot of money, and it really hurt her heart. So she was very depressed. She said even she had a, she was seeing a doctor because she couldn't sleep. So I told her, the sister, sister, do you believe that for Christians, nothing happens by chance? That's true, actually. For Christians, nothing happens by coincidence, but it is always according to the will of God. So why that happened? Why she lost money? I mean, she didn't really lost money, but she lost the opportunity to make a lot of money, and she was really sorry about that. So why that happened? I don't know. But I was telling her, it is always according to God's will. And maybe if you had made a lot of money that time by investing in houses, you know, you're not coming to church anymore. You'll be always searching for another opportunity, another opportunity. God already knew that. That's why God didn't give you the chance to be successful in your investing in this uh, house market, real estate market. So slowly, slowly she understood. You know, even something small happening in our life, it doesn't just happen by chance. Because after we become born again, it is God who leads us and takes care of us. And it is because of all His mercy. Let's turn to Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah uh, chapter 9 verse 12. Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 12. Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 12. Let's read it together. Moreover, you led them by day with a cloudy pillar, and by night with a pillar of fire, to give them light on the road which they should travel. Of course, we know God provided the pillar of cloud, because the desert is very hot during the daytime, the cloud gave them the shadow so that they can take a rest. And in the nighttime, God gave them the pillar of light so that they can be warm. It's very cold during the nighttime. And we know now it was by His mercy. Verse 19, verse 19, Yet in your manifold mercies, you did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud did not depart from them by day to lead them on the road, nor the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way they should go. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manner from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. Verse 21, 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing, their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. God did everything in His manifold mercies. That's what verse 19 says. In His manifold mercies, His infinite mercies. Somebody asked, how come His mercy when they were suffering in the wilderness? Well, after spending 40 years in the wilderness, the Israel, the children of Israel has changed so that now they are ready to conquer the land of Canaan. But remember, 38 years ago at Kadesh Barnea, they didn't trust God and they returned to the wilderness and spent 38 years and all this old generation died. It was training. Only through training and trials and suffering, we grow. So, in His manifold mercies, God took care of them. God did not forsake them in the wilderness, and the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire was the evidence that God cared for them. And verse 20, you also gave your good spirit. The Holy Spirit is guiding us even now. And God gave them manna, the food, and water. So, 21, verse 21, 40 years you sustain them in the wilderness. Without God's sustenance, they could not survive even one single day. And you know what? That's what happens to us too. If God does not take care of us even one single day, how can He survive in this world? It is all by God's grace. And in His manifold mercies, we are here 
living and enjoying and surviving with a lot of blessings from God. Sometimes we forget. I thank God because He placed me in this position right now. It is by grace. Everything happened to me is by grace. Sometimes I didn't like it, but now I know it was necessary for me to be here. One time, Samuel, he defeated Philistines. There was a fight against Philistines, and he got victory over Philistines, and he set up a stone. Why? To, to remember what God has done. That place is called Ebenezer, mean, meaning stone. And Samuel said, thus far, thus far, God helped us. Let's turn to 1 Samuel chapter 7. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Let me read. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer saying, thus far, the Lord has helped us. Thus far, up to here, up to this moment, God helped me. I am who I am by God's grace. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I am who I am by God's grace, by God's mercy, and that's why we are here in his manifold mercies. And that's why we cannot complain to God. Okay, let me ask you. Who is wiser, God or us? Of course, God. God has infinite wisdom and God cares for us. And that's why we can be sure that whatever happens in our life is because of God's grace. So Apostle Paul one time said, whatever position you are in, in the time of your calling, in the time of your salvation, remain there. It's okay. It's okay. Because when God called you in that position, that is where you are supposed to be. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20. Let me read. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. You have your own calling. Maybe you are housewife when you are called. Remain there. And maybe you are student studying. Remain there. In verse 21, were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. Some people say, oh God, I'm a slave. I cannot go to church um, sometime because I'm a slave. What can I do? Apostle Paul says, don't worry. It's your calling. God called you in that position that remain there. However, Apostle Paul advised, if you can be made free, rather use it. Which means, if you have an opportunity to serve God better, use it. However, even if the chance is not given to you, do not be concerned about it. Do not be concerned about it. Some brothers and sisters say, I'm very poor. You know, I want to have a fellowship in my house, but my house is very poor. Why I'm poor like this when brother and sister have a bigger house, nicer house? It's okay. God called you in that calling, and the will of God is remain there. Let's remember, God is merciful God, gracious God. He is the one who is leading us and guiding us. And we are where we are. We are who we are by God's grace. That's why there should be no murmuring or no complaint. Think about this. When God put you in your position, why you should complain? Ms. Crosby, who wrote, uh, fine Crosby, who wrote many, many beautiful hymns. She was blind. Even though she was blind, maybe because she was blind, she could write 
so beautiful hymns for us, which we like even now, we sing all the time. You know, sometimes you know, we are in very difficult condition. Do you remember how the pearl is made? Pearl? You know, the clam inside the shell, something like a dust or dirt comes in and then it produces beautiful pearl from suffering. The pearl means there was suffering. So, God is always teaching us and leading us the way He wants us to go. Let's turn to Psalm number 25. Psalm number 25, verse 12. Psalm number 25, verse 12. Psalm number 25, verse 12. Let's read it together. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. When you fear God, when you honor God, when you trust God, him shall he teach in the way he chooses. God will show you the way. You know, we sing the hymn, he will make a way. He will make a way. And Psalm uh, number 32, 32, verse 8. Psalm number 32, verse 8. Psalm number 32, verse 8. Let's read it together. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Yes. God is always watching over us. And he said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. There are 7.6 billion people. I mean, there are many, a lot. But God is infinitely powerful and wise, so he can watch each and every person in this world. It is God who is leading you this way, that way, actually. So whatever happens in your life, believe, is from God. It's not by coincidence. There is a will of God, and you have to ask God why this is happening. And then you have to obey God. Or leading you in that way because in verse 9 do not be like horse or like a mule which have no understanding which must be harnessed with a bit and bridle else they will not come near you there are some people who are like a horse and mule they do not obey they should be harnessed with a bit and bridle which means only by force they are they are led which is not good we have to obey God. We have to trust God. Because He always wants the best for us. So repeat after me. Whatever happens to me is the best for me. Whatever happens to me is the best for me. That's true. You might not like it. Like the sister who called me for counseling. I lost the opportunity to, to be successful. I said, well, maybe that happened according to God's will. Not maybe, 100%, because God is our Father. Without His permission, nothing happens to His own children. So let's remember two things. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Do you believe that? God is omnipotent. He can do whatever He wants. Yes. And secondly, He loves you more than anyone else. He cares for you. He loves you. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. From here, we know how much God loves us. So Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You remember? God did not spare his own son, Jesus Christ, but killed him, actually. Delivered him up for us all. Then how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God already gave his only son. Then what else would not he give us? He will give us all. So when we know God is omnipotent, he is all-powerful. And we know that God loves us more than anyone else. Then the conclusion is, wherever we are, that's where God 
wants us to be. Isn't it? Because if there's a better place, God will put us there because he loves us and he has a power. But why God put us here? For example, in Suwon Church, now here, because this is the best place for us. That's why what I remember all the time. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, so please remember this scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Yes, all things work together for good to those who love God. All things, which means there's no exception. Whatever happens in your life, even a single moment in your life is happening for your own good. Isn't it wonderful? We are protected. God guides us and leads us every moment of our life. And not only that, not only that, there's a promise for us. Maybe you are suffering now, or maybe you are experiencing some difficult times. But after that pass away, by the way, everything passes away. It will pass away. It doesn't go forever. Okay? Then you will grow up more. You will be like gold, refined gold. Let's turn to Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23, verse 10. Job chapter 23, verse 10. Job chapter 23, verse 10. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I share comforts as gold. He knows. God knows everything. Don't worry. He listens to you. He cares for you. He knows how much you hurt he understand. Do you know who suffered the most in this world? Jesus. He was beaten. He was uh, people spat on his face, and he was pierced in his side. He understand how you feel. His best friend, Judas Iscariot, betrayed him. Right. So when you suffer, don't say you are the only one who suffers. Jesus understand. And God knows the way that you take. And when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. What does that mean? After this trial is finished, we will come forth like a gold. Very precious, very valuable, very strong. So that we can live for God with a stronger faith. And Another promise is we'll become like, um, you know, in the morning time, sun is rising, and the sun uh, in the beginning is very small, the speck of light in the beginning, but it is coming up and becomes brighter, brighter. That is what happens to Christian. Let's turn to um, Proverbs. If the sun, there's a Proverbs, chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, verse 18 and 19, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Let's read it together. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like a darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. The path of the just is like the sh shining sun. In the beginning, Maybe it's a very small speck of light, but it becomes brighter and brighter, and our life is full of blessings. Believe me, that is true. However, for the wicked people, they are in the darkness. They do not know what's happening in their life. They stumble. There's no meaning. No lessons. Oh, maybe God was leading them to salvation through that, but that's not truly blessing um, per se. But for us, we know we are like a shining, shining sun. We are rising sun. And the sun will become perfect when you go to heaven because that's the promise God gave us. We'll be perfect one day in heaven. Even our body will be transformed into a perfect body and we'll be with God in perfect kingdom of God forever and ever. So let's remember... Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, God said, you have dwelt here long enough. And then let's go. 
which means God was guiding them step by step until they reached the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan represents heaven. So until we reach heaven, also our loving Father is leading us and guiding us every moment in our life. That's why we don't have to worry about it. We always trust Him because whatever happens in our life is according to His will. And when you believe that, when you accept that fact, you'll have the true peace because whatever happens in your life, now you know there's a meaning and purpose and that's how you grow in your Christian life. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us and guiding us all the time. You gave Jesus Christ so that he, dies. he died for our sins forever and you made us as righteous as Jesus and as white as the snow. And now we know we'll join you in eternal kingdom of heaven when Jesus comes again. But even in this world, we feel you are guiding us every day, every moment, so that we can always live according to your will. And Lord, we know sometimes we suffer, but even the time we know there is your will in the suffering. Today, we accept the fact that whatever happens in our life is according to your will. So Lord, thank you so much for guiding us and leading us and always help us to have a peace, true peace in our life so that we can worship you and we can serve you in complete peace. Thank you so much for this time and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.